Hello and welcome to another episode of Kotak Mahindra Bank presents Corporate Conversations powered by Times Network where I sit down with the heads of different companies to talk to them about what makes them tick what their thoughts are on the future and to know a little bit more about their businesses on this episode I'm talking to the heads of organizations in the NBFC sector Non-banking financial companies or NBFCs are increasingly subject to new age regulatory nuances and the changing tides of technology on the second episode of Kotak Mahindra Bank presents Corporate Conversations powered by Times Network, a panel of experts share their insights on how NBFCs can evolve and adapt to today's new market realities. On the panel were Sachin Samant, Senior Executive Vice President and Head Banking and Financial Institutions Group, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Sushil Agarwal, CEO Avas Financers. Sanjay Chamria, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Magma Fincorp. And Asim Dhru, Managing Director and CEO, Small Business FinCredit India. Mr. Saman, first question to you. Now we're talking about NBFCs. What are some lessons that new and old NBFCs can learn from the current crisis? This will be broadly two things. I think is the better liability management and the risk-based pricing. I think we have seen this uh, in 96 NBFC crisis, we have seen this in 2008-9, uh, we have seen this now. So there is always a lure to finance the long-term assets with short-term borrowing because you make better spreads. What will happen going forward? Probably regulator will come up something with like a liquidity coverage ratio like you have for banks. Or even if it doesn't, mm -hmm. banks, the NBFCs themselves mm -hmm. will be more prudent in the ALM management. Mm -hmm. NBFCs will have the liability buffer mm -hmm. for next couple of months, something mm -hmm. like that will happen mm -hmm. going forward. So a lot of a mix of uh, regulatory uh, and self-governance, so to say, maybe correct. to keep that in check. Absolutely correct. Uh, Mr. Chamre, I'll come to you. Now with this crisis, do you see customers maybe being a little scared of NBFCs, going to NBFCs and going back to banks? And because banks are also being aggressive, what's your take on that? Well, I've been in the business for around 30 years and I've seen uh, many a blurring line of distinction between the banks and the NBFCs. Mm -hmm. So let's get it right that uh, so far as the NBFCs are concerned, they cater to the underserved sectors, sections of the society, and also in the tier towns, where these people, one, find it difficult to reach out to banks to comply with the documentation. And at another level, it is also difficult for banks to have a cost-effective model to reach out in the interiors and uh, serve a lower ticket size, and also to assess their creditworthiness. So I think from a sustainability perspective, NBFCs are here to stay, and even the regulator has recognized the role being played by the NBFCs in bringing the informal segment into the formal banking system. Mr. Dhruv, one important component is trust. Trust, I feel, might have somewhere been a little weakened because of this current crisis. How do you bring back that trust? Because, I mean, that's the foundation. One of the misnomers of, of the whole financial services industry is this whole distinction between banks and NBFCs. Mm -hmm. and for some reason, NBFCs have been referred to as the shadow banking system, which is, which is not being fair to the NBFC segment. Because if you, look at, if you look at the size, today private sector banks are about 30 trillion uh, rupees. And uh, if you take NBFCs plus HFCs, that is also 30 trillion. So when the shadow becomes as long as the body, you, know, you, you, need, to, you need to redefine uh, the word shadow. So yes, NBFCs uh, have, gone through, have gone through a difficult period in the last six months. But Within NBFCs, there have been well-run NBFCs, and in any business, there are either well-done businesses or not so well-done businesses. When there are well-done businesses, there is a measure of trust. So there are NBFCs which are extremely well-run, mm -hmm. and even in this last six months, they have not faced any problem mm -hmm. of trust. So it is not that everybody has faced a run on their deposits. Only those where the trust was missing faced a run. So in the end, it's about how well you run a business, more than what kind of a business you run. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, coming to you, the important part here, like he said, is about how you're running the business. Um, with these regulatory changes coming in, a lot of the spotlight is now on MBFCs. How would you be guiding your team to ensure that they are following through with all these uh, regulations, all the correct processes, all the self-governance, which is very important right now? Regulator always works for the betterment of the institutions which they are regulating. So we have seen the past 2012 crisis, then uh, another issues, 
and whenever these things happen regulator comes into the picture and we should take it in a positive manner when regulator intervenes so my sense is that whenever regulatory guidelines comes this is for the betterment of the sector though initially it will look like that it is pinching some of the players but right. in the long run that works very well and typically in housing nhb has a regulator it's, mm. it's very helpful for the industry doing three audits give you guidelines directions keeping you agile for the future risk mm -hmm. and that has helped the industry going in a sustainable basis mr samant um, our panelists here have also spoken about you know the difference between nbfc and banks shouldn't be there it's just a thin line it's, it shouldn't be around so your thoughts on how banks and nbfcs can you know hold hands and work for the betterment of the uh, finally the customer the consumer out there like Mr. Chamri has said, I think NBFCs over a period of time have shown that they have a very important role in the financial ecosystem. Mm. The kind of reach, the kind of, uh, you know, the niche products, the kind of penetration NBFCs have done, probably banks may not be able to mm. uh, compete at all places. But on the other side, banks probably have a better liability franchise. Mm. Depositors might trust their money with banks more mm -hmm. than the NBFCs. So I think what can happen going forward, probably a cooperation model will emerge where NBFCs will be kind of an asset generating source mm -hmm. and they will downsell their portfolios more aggressively, mm -hmm. securitize their pro portfolio more aggressively with the banks. Mm -hmm. Probably a co-lending mechanism will come up where 20% mm -hmm. uh, is participated by NBFCs, 80% is participated by banks. Uh, something like this will emerge. So both the NBFCs and banks are mm -hmm. playing to their strengths. So I guess it's for the overall good of the credit system that you play to the strength of both the parties, which is the banks having deeper pockets, mm -hmm. cheaper cost of funds, and a higher, a bigger balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And NBFC is being nimble-footed, ability to have a lower cost of operations, and bring the informal segment into the formal banking system. Yes. I think the structure being now evolved by the regulator and now banks taking a cue, I think it will pave the way for a much more organized cooperation going forward. Technology and agility are the two key important traits of NBFCs. Um, I want you to shed some more light on technology. How is that on the ground? What are some changes you're seeing on ground that is helping NBFCs go the final mile? Today in India, if you look at our overall housing, our overall, overall consumer debt to GDP, we are at about 75, 78%. And uh, uh, which is which is extremely low, you know, and, and there is a lot of scope for this to grow. Mm. At the moment of about 220 million credit ready customers, we've been able to reach out to only 70 million credit uh, customers as of now. So there are only 70 million live credit accounts between banks and NBFCs. Right. So clearly one third has been the penetration to what is today available and ready for credit. Mm -hmm. So the challenge really is to reach out to this entire set of customer base, which is ready for credit, but not yet been approached by any of the organized financiers. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is that this entire segment is lying in semi-urban and rural area in India. Mm -hmm. And that is what is difficult to reach out. The technology is, is, is now used to reach out to this financial customer base. Mm. The second piece is in terms of evaluation. There what is happening is that uh, now with alternative data being available, we are able to design better models of taking decision on customers who are not yet been tested for credit mm. by testing them with small amounts of credit looking at alternative data not necessarily backed by traditional income models. Mm -hmm. So an interesting uh, opportunity has presented itself and between what banks have traditionally done and NBSCs have traditionally done, the entire fintech play yes. is now emerged where we can do something better than what we had done before. Interesting. Technology has also given the solution for mm -hmm. two key components of running NBSC HFC business, mm -hmm. sustainability. Mm -hmm. One is your operating uh, model OPEX yes. and second is your asset quality and judging the customer mm -hmm. where you don't have the scores or better underwriting, mm -hmm. understanding the customer. So both the things has changed and seen the paradigm shift right. with the use of technology. Uh, Mr. Chamri, I want your inputs specifically on the acquisition part. So like Mr. Dhru said that yes, there is a market out there which has not been tapped. Uh, how are you seeing, seeing technology play a critical role there to help NBFCs acquire new customers, reach out to them? With the entry of the fintech players, mm -hmm. which has actually created a new horizon altogether, and also regulator and the judicial changes have brought in a whole lot of focus into this. So with the huge of India stack, which is starts with the mm -hmm. KYC, mm -hmm. then you have the ACH mandates, mm -hmm. then you have bureau integration, and then you have the uh, RTGS. Mm -hmm. 
So if you look at right from the origination up to the servicing of the account, which means disbursal and collection of installments, everything you can do with a stack of technology mm. and thereby apart from saving on the uh, operating expenses, you can provide a much greater convenience to the customer, which is actually of paramount importance. Mm -hmm. Every NBFC, every HFC worth its salt mm -hmm. has invested into how to originate, how to use analytics to mm -hmm. use surrogate means to establish the credit worthiness. Mm -hmm. Because as Ru mentioned that we have only touched the uh, first bottom. Right. There are you know two more layers, mm -hmm. which is the next 20, 200 million customers in the country mm -hmm. who doesn't have a credit need. So yeah. how do we reach out to them in the cost efficient manner and in the risk uh, framework? Mm -hmm. the, Mr. Agarwal, the other thought there is educating that rural customer. Let's look at that sector, which is the financial inclusion part, which is the customer that NBFCs mainly reach out to. They don't understand this. They've never been educated about this. It's not in their everyday life. So what are some uh, initiatives that NBFCs sh should do, some steps that NBFCs should take, that the customer, their end customer, is also uh, educated, is made knowledgeable about both the good part and the bad part, the risks as well as the benefits? So when NBFC and HFC works, mm. so initial strata, when they take that risk and they put that system, ecosystem, which Meet customer understands what are the benefits of getting into a organized lending mm. uh, uh, borrowing. Mm. That creates one level of uh, awareness. Mm. And second is your efforts which mm. you directly put. So say when we are working with like IFC type of organization and CDC, mm. so they provide a specific kind of funds which emphasis on the literacy of these customers which doesn't have this kind of leeway. And now most more of the more organizations are coming with say technology setups mm. at that mm. level also, which yes. makes three or four hours of their working time free to give that kind of education to this. And that is changing a lot. And that has changed the scenario also very significant way the uh, mm. literacy happens at mm. the level and the outcome of that in today's six. Superb. Going ahead, your thoughts, which of these sectors would be a high growth one for the NBFCs? Is it SMEs, agri, or is it housing, affordable housing? The fact is that in India, we do not have a demand side problem. We have a supply side problem. Mm. So there is no dearth of demand, be it consumer assets, be it retail assets, be it uh, uh, you know, rural uh, assets, be it uh, SME assets. We are a nation of shopkeepers and small businesses. And most of these do not have access to organized finance. Mm. They have been either relying on trade credit or relying on uh, market credit. Now, both of these are extremely expensive uh, to get. The constraints to finance today is not on the demand side, it's on the supply side. So after the demonetization uh, jump that happened, banks' liability growth is consistently slower than, deposit, uh, than loan growth. And second is that now there is a trust deficit that has developed between banks and NBFCs that you know, we have to bridge. And therefore, the onward movement of finance that used to happen between mutual funds and, and banks into NBFCs, that also has uh, come off. So right now, the issue is more on availability of finance mm. than the demand for finance. Well, I'm just going to switch gears here for a bit and move to find out more about the person behind the business that you guys are heading. And I want to start with you, Mr. Agarwal. Yeah. You know, generally in life, we all have at least one mentor, if not many. Um, your thoughts, who would you place as your mentor, someone that you've learned from and uh, look up to? One is Sanjay Agarwal. So I worked with him last seven years journey. What I've learned from him is that we need to be adaptable for situations because cycles will come and go. Yeah. And if you are not adaptable, then you will not survive. And second is Mr. Nanu Pamnani, who mm. is Bajaj Vice Chairman. He mentors us also. So with him, I have learned that you need to see at least for your business five and 10 years ahead. Mm. 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 Identify the risk and prepare your organization for that risk from today. And mm. put that money into investment side, not OPEX side. Mm. Because that will make your organization more sustainable for longer than uh, Mr. Samant, like Mr. Agarwal said, the market's volatile that we all know, we're seeing that. How do you motivate your team to uh, stay motivated and to you know ride out that storm? If your organization objective 
mm. and your team is aligned to the organization objective mm. actually what happens is you need to be very clear in your communication mm. what you want to achieve mm. and the policies behind it you need to tell the team that what you expect from them and kind of guide them in order to achieve that probably celebrate with them in case they achieve it probably have that that personal connect mm. broadly speaking if the the team finds so the employee finds him as a part of the big picture i think you always be motivated Mr. Chamrel, uh, you've seen a lot of ups and downs of the industry, but how do you keep calm and carry on in this sector? What's your, I don't know, special mantra? It's very difficult when chips are down mm. to be able to hold yourself back and then be maintain your temperament and calm. Having said that, uh, also it is equally important because when you are the leader, there are several thousand pairs of eyes which are looking at you. Mm. How do you perform under pressure? I think uh, that is where the hallmark of a great leader is. I don't think that we are anywhere there, but the journey is on and uh, someday hopefully we will be able to make a better version of ourselves to keep the temperament and the cool in adverse circumstances. Mr. Dhruv, you've again also had a long uh, celebrated career in this sector. If there was one thing that, you know, if you could turn back the time, something that you would not have done. We are a very lucky generation uh, because we saw India transform from what was a pretty archaic uh, economy with uh, basic goods not available, mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. people waiting for 10 years for a telephone line. We saw people waiting 10 years for a Bajaj Chetak scooter. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, saw, we saw the first black and white television come through. So I mean, from, from there, when you, when, what happens is that the short run, uh, if I was to go back and tell a younger version of me one piece of advice, it would be that in the short run, often you see negative news. So as, as Charlie Chaplin said, you know, that life is often, often uh, uh, a tragedy in close-ups, but a comedy in a long shot. Uh, if you flip it around for financial services, what tends to happen is that if you look at India in the long run from where we are today, Despite all the problems, if you take a longer picture, we have a wonderful uh, innings ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the last few years have been absolutely wonderful in terms of how the country has taken shape. Uh, but the best is yet to come. Mr. Chamra, just one uh, final question, and I'll be coming to all the panelists also on this, is, you know, the, um, you're all guiding a large workforce. And you also spoke about this a little earlier. How are you uh, always ensuring that you're guiding them correctly, that the message at the top should percolate to the guy at the bottom as well. The, whether you, know, you call it vision, you call it mission, you call it corporate statement, whatever you want to call it. But in the end, what the top management is trying to do should also be something that the guy at the bottom is aware of. How are you working towards that? The mantra is very clear, mm. which is communication, communication, and communication. Mm. Two is living the li life. Uh, living one day in the life of a mm -hmm. field executive, mm -hmm. once in a month. Mm -hmm. Living the life of a branch manager, mm -hmm. one day in a month. Yeah. And uh, then spending time with them in the field. Mm -hmm. That is actually the best way to motivate mm -hmm. and communicate and convey as to what you expect them to do. In a management jargon, what we say is that two things which will ensure this, mm -hmm. communication and motivation, which is the uh, governance and the review rigor. Right. Mr. Samant, next, uh, what's the biggest disruption that you see in the next couple of years in the uh, NBFC banking financial services sector? See, I'll tell you what we specifically speak about NBFCs. Of course, uh, like Asim mentioned, there's a huge opportunity mm -hmm. in this space. The next growth cycle will happen from SME, MSME piece, and therefore there is no problem on the demand side. Mm -hmm. The supply side, the liability side is something that we are very careful about. Mm. The NBFCs who will have dearth of raising capital, both equity and debt, mm. will maybe find some consolidation happening in this space. Mm -hmm. So one has to be careful about these basic principles of liability management and the risk-based pricing. Mm -hmm. I think the, there is a huge opportunity in the NBFC space, yes, I'll say. Fantastic. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, your thoughts? Specifically, I want to talk to you about the affordable housing space. Where do you see, um, I mean, in the next five years, what will it look like? There is a huge opportunity, mm. and the current uh, liquidity crisis has even opened up more opportunity. But mm. at the same time, it has corrected some of the key risk which uh, this industry was running. Mm -hmm. And future is bright. And last 20 years, housing is the only sustained industry for with the same growth numbers. I hope for next 20 years we'll be able to do it. Uh, Mr. Chamriya, going ahead, one big challenge and one big opportunity for the NBFC sector. The way we stand today, I think the liability franchise would be a challenge. And if tackled well, mm. 
there is a world of opportunity. And in terms of the opportunity, I call it uh, roti, kapda, makan, or suraksha. So when you provide loan for the productive purposes and generating revenue, mm -hmm. so therefore you are providing him food and uh, clothing. Yes. You provide affordable housing, so you provide him makan. Yeah. And uh, we have an insurance, so you provide him insurance, so therefore you provide him suraksha. Fantastic. So you yeah. take care of all. You got to take care of all. Fantastic. Mr. Dhru, last word. In 10 years, if you and me are sitting on this panel, what would we be talking about? We have not yet reached the Uber moment in financial services. Mm -hmm. So even today, getting availing a loan is still not as seamless an experience as ordering a cab. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 10 years down the line, you know, some of us, one of us somewhere will crack the code and you will have, uh, you know, we will be talking that, remember those days, how we used to <laughs> apply for a loan? So I think that is coming. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming here and talking to me about this. These were some great insights, both on the business end and on uh, your personal ends. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. You were watching Kotak Mahindra Bank presents Corporate Conversations powered by Times Network. It's been a truly enlightening session. We've learned so much. And definitely about the NBFC sector, the way ahead is bright. Yes, there might be minor temporary speed bumps, speed breakers, hiccups, call them what you want. But the power of technology is here to make a long-lasting impact in the sector to provide a better and a brighter future for everyone. Thank you so much for watching.